your client can have water. Sometimes clients are only allowed ice chips, or they can only have water without ice in it, or they might be on a fluid restriction, and then you would not be giving them um, extra fluids. Occasionally, clients will be on what's called force or push fluids, and that's when they need to be getting more fluids than they typically would, would take as they desire. In that case, every time you are in the client's room or any time that you're taking them to an activity, you offer them water. Would you like something to drink right now? If you take them to the bathroom when they're done, say, now would you like something to drink? And you'll be recording how much they drink. Some clients are also on restricted fluids. This may be someone who's having kidney problems or heart problems or having swelling in their ankles. In this case, they're restricted to a specific amount of fluids a day. And then you'll also be keeping track of that. And so if they want something to drink between meals, you have to make sure that it fits into their allotment. There may be situations in which a client is unable to have any food or fluid and cannot eat in the normal way. This may occur if a client is unconscious, if they're having surgery, if they have any disease of the digestive tract, they have persistent vomiting, or if they're unable to swallow without aspirating, which is also called choking. First thing you need to know is the term NPO, which you'll see frequently. That's called nothing by mouth. That is when they can't have anything, ice chips, water, food, anything. This can happen prior to uh, surgery, if someone is um, needing lab work, or if someone has aspiration problems and they can never have anything to eat. And it's your responsibility to know which of your clients are NPO, either permanently or that specific time. Then you'd need to let your nurse know if you see them eating or drinking anything. One way of giving clients fluids if they are NPO is through something called intravenous feedings, or IV. This is where you take um, a, a, a needle and put it into the vein, and they get their fluids that way. Typically seen in the hospital, sometimes seen in nursing homes when a patient is not getting enough, uh, if they're not taking enough fluids orally, and it's a way to rehydrate them. Another method of feeding a patient is called total parenteral nutrition. In this method, all the fluids um, have protein, calories, and uh, fats in them. And it is, um, it is provided through a large vein, frequently in the chest area or in the neck. And all their nutrition is, is received that way. And that's for a client whose gut does not work, um, cannot get enough um, nourishment at all um, that way. A more typical um, method of feeding someone who can't eat in the traditional way is called enteral feeding. This is specially prepared liquid formulas that are provided through a tube. The tube will either be administered through the nose and into the stomach, and this is called a nasogastric or NG tube or a tube that's directly inserted into the stomach uh, through the skin, and that's called a gastrostomy or G-tube. Uh, as a caregiver, your responsibilities um, for these tubes will be to make sure that there's no tension or pulling on the tube when the client changes position. You don't ever want to risk having the tube pulled out. Check your client to make sure that there's no skin irritation or reports of pain around the tube or the taping site. Check the tubing for kinks. The fluids can't flow through if there's a kink in the tube. Make sure the client's not lying on their tubing. And you may need to remind some of them that they can't be lying on it, or they can't roll over it with their wheelchair. And you'll need to be providing frequent mouth care for your clients when they're not eating. Uh, you'll be uh, brushing their teeth more. You'll be using moist swabs to moisten their mouths. You'll be needing to keep their lips uh, moistened with Vaseline or, or something else. Um, notify your nurse if the controlling device is, make, is beeping or alarming. That indicates that there's something wrong with the method of, of transferring the food into the client. With an enteral feeding, you need to keep the head of the bed elevated between 45 and 90 degrees 
during feeding and for 30 to 60 minutes afterwards. If your client is on continuous feedings, then their head of the bed will always have to be elevated. This is to, risk, uh, to prevent um, risks of aspiration or the food coming back up uh, through the esophagus. You'll need to make sure that the tube is kept clean and free of any mucus at the entrance uh, to the nose or the stomach. You'll fasten the connecting tubing to the client's clothing uh, to prevent strain or tension. And then you'll need to report to your supervisor or nurse if a client is retching, if they're complaining of nausea, if they have diarrhea, and l let the supervisor know that immediately. <clears throat> Now we're going to be watching two demonstrations on feeding clients. The first one will be assisting a client who can feed themselves, and the second demonstration will be feeding a client um, who cannot feed themselves. Assisting the client who can feed himself. Wash hands. Assemble equipment. Bedside commode, bedpan, or urinal. Disposable gloves, wash water and soap, oral hygiene items, assist with toileting if needed. Put on robe and slippers and assist to chair. Provide washcloth to wash hands and face. Assist with oral hygiene or denture care. Assist to comb hair. Clear overbed table and position in front of client. Remove unpleasant items from sight. Wash hands. Obtain meal tray and check for completeness. Check dietary card with client's identification band. Place tray on overbed table and arrange food in convenient manner. Assist in food preparation as needed. <clears throat> 